Writing's advice. Use it. It's on every video. Turn on insertion follows playback. Turn on destructive record. Turn on fade in. Spend all your time in the mix window. Limit yourself to 24 tracks. Bring up the big counter window. Use that for referencing where you are in the song, along with the memory locations. And then to get between them, don't click like this. Use the fast forward and the rewind like this. And to keep that on, go up here to preferences, operation, and then tick latch, fast forward and rewind. And there you go, that's pretty much all you need to do. Now, why on earth would you want to do this? Mm, really, you wouldn't. Um, there are reasons as to why I think it's a good thing to do, but we'll get to all those later in the video. First things first, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. All right. So the first thing that we are going to do is turn this guy on up here. Insertion follows playback, because if we don't, I'm just going to mute these for a second. What's going to happen is, let's say we play it from here, verse 1. And what happens, as soon as we stop, it goes right back to where we started. Now, no tape machine in the world is going to do that, alright? What we want to do is turn that on, so that as soon as we play... And then hit stop. Wherever we stop is where the uh, playhead stops. And that is exactly what a tape machine will do. Now that we've got that checked, the next thing we want to do is we want to go and change normal record to destructive record. But quickly, just to go over it, normal record, you know, you record. Yeah, I'll fix a little bit of that up. You hit record again here. No, I like the first one more. I mean, you can just control Z that, but you know. You can even get rid of that bit for all you want. Oh, now look, you got that whole first take back. You, you really cannot do that at all with tape. So, we're gonna change this to destructive record. And an important thing to notice here, whenever you do destructive record, you have to actually arm it first and then hit play. If you just press three, it's just not gonna do anything. So, record enable that, then hit play. So what was previously audio 516, no longer exists. Some idiot had to drive past right then, I apologize for that. And some idiot is soaring down the road on something, so I apologize for that too. And try mixing through that, all right? That's, you wanna get better at doing something, do that every day. So, now that we've got Audio 5.18, we cannot get back that other one, Audio 5.16, I think it was. It's never coming back, right? It's erased from existence. This is all we have, and that is exactly the way a tape machine would do something. So don't fuck that up. You know, don't fuck anything up when you do this, because you're not getting it back. All right. Now, this is the window that we are going to spend most of our time in. Another thing we want to do as far as our operations go is we want to go into window and we want to get big counter. All right, this is what we're going to use as our reference for where we are in the song. The next thing you want to get out from the window thing is memory locations. Now, with the memory locations, I've already gone through and put all the markers in. Markers, of course, being these things here. An easy way, I think, to do this is to simply just play the song 
and then hit enter on the number pad and that'll bring up a marker key, so like this. And then you hit enter and it'll put in, you just write in that location. So that, that's an easy way to do that. And I also like to number as far as time goes and that'll be important in a minute, I'll show you why. In this whole memory locations thing, you can write this on a bit of paper if you want to have it be really old school. Um, it'll save you room on your screen, but it will take up room on your desk. And if your desk is like mine, you've already got enough stuff all over your desk. So that's up to you how you want to do that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go into preferences and make sure we're in operation here at the top. What we want to do is wait for this truck to pass us. This is like a suburban street. I don't know why there's so many trucks driving around. This is insane. All right. There's another car. It's like, how? It's a Tuesday. No, it's not. It's a Wednesday. How many people are driving around at 10, 11 on a Wednesday in this suburban street? It's like a fucking main road. Jeez. All right. Anyway. So you want this latch, forward, and rewind. Tick that. All right. You can have audio, but that sort of defeats our purpose, as we'll get to in a minute. Um, and let's, this is our rewind and fast forward speed, I might, let's put that up to maybe 500. Alright, so most important, make sure that is ticked latch, forward, rewind. So once that's done, we can actually hit this rewind button here, and same with the fast forward. But we can hit this rewind button, and notice we're at 148. If we want to go back to the intro over here, it's at 112. So we're going to hit this. And we're simply going to wait till it gets back to 112. So that's working in a linear fashion, the same way, linear fashion, the same way that you would be the tape machine. Now, let's say we want to get to chorus, right? And if we look over here, I mean, we can easily just click that and move right there, but that's cheating. We're not going to do that. Um, chorus 159. So we're going to hit fast forward. And we're going to play the waiting game until we get to 159. It really doesn't take that long when you think about it. We're almost there already. And boom, there we are, a bit over. All right, whatever, that'll do us. So now we know we're at our chorus. So when we play, there we are in the chorus. So that takes a lot of time. You would think, especially when it comes to mixing, I believe this is a faster way to do it, and I'll explain that in just a minute. A few minutes later. All right, so why would you want to do this? Um, like I said at the start, you wouldn't. You know, it's not really that beneficial in a lot of ways, but the ways that it is beneficial, I think it's very beneficial. Um, you know, you can make the argument, oh, it's a new way of doing things. Yeah, by new way, I mean an old way of doing things. I mean, it's really an old way of doing things. I never grew up on tape. I never recorded the tape, you know, it's like it's, it's pretty much a pretentious nostalgic way of doing things. I'm not even nostalgic for it. I didn't live through it, you know, how could I be? But you know what I mean. Um, however, I think it is really beneficial in the sense that you're going to be using your ears a lot more. And this is audio. What do you need your eyes for, you know? Beethoven didn't even need his ears. So really... You don't need anything for audio, it just happens somehow. <laughs> but uh, um, I suppose he needed his eyes to be able to notate it, I guess. You need some, you need a sense, I suppose. Anyway, it, it always makes you think back to, uh, if you remember, I don't know if anyone watched it, it was just really good commentary, the super bad commentary. This is part in that, right? Where um, Seth Rogen's talking about the new cameras they're using. It's like a natural rhythm on the set. Like every 10 minutes, you kind of can stop and regroup and think things through for a few minutes. Video lends to not thinking about what you're doing almost, I think. <laughs> you just go, let's just shoot, it's shoot, experimental. shoot. That's why it was a, not a fun set to visit because it, you were always shooting. Yeah, and like if you went yeah. outside of the soundstage, you're like, I'm just going to go take a piss. You'd be stuck out there for 45 minutes because they never cut. Anyway, I think there's a lot of parallels between that and audio recording, you know, you just you need that time to decompress a little bit, you know. But well, so to speak, pun intended, whatever. But also, the thing is, if you take anything away from this, 
is that you need to go and listen to that commentary. That's like one of the best DVD commentaries. Then there, there needs to be a petition for like commentaries to be on Netflix. You know, if you can put them on a DVD, you can put them on Netflix. That's one of the best commentaries. Like that whole part when Jonah Hill and Judd Apatow get into that fight over Judd Apatow's daughter being there and Jonah Hill swearing. That's just like one of the best things. You know. This scene is fucking because hilarious, I'm... man. Jonah. Jonah. Please. Yeah. Okay. Mom's oh, over there. Oh, sorry. Swear, oh, Jonah. Dude, Fucking what is this? Wrong. Bring your daughter to work day? I mean... Hey, be cool, man. Just, just be cool. Like. It's super bad. I cursed the whole movie. Yeah. It's like the commentary. I mean, it's just like, whatever. You know, I'm not trying to ruin it. Let's just go back I'm to the movie. I'm not trying to ruin Let's it. Go I mean, back it's kind of ruining the, the commentary, Judd. Part of my job is saying fuck. I'm sorry, Hey, Mark. hey, hey. Come on. Don't fuck. just be... Say it, Jonah. Just say it. Judd, fuck you. Yes! Hey, fuck you, Hey, you know, I don't need... I don't, I'll, I'll I don't go. need this commentary. I'll go. We'll go to the Museum of Modern Art. Tell I don't care. Go. Himself. Go to MoMA. I, I'll go to MoMA. Go to MoMA and tell not him, curse. You should go to HOMO. Get go to HOMO. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're the guys who are going to get in trouble for saying words like that. When I'm what? not here to tell you not to say those yeah, words. Yeah, people get real. People that buy the Superbad DVD are real offended by the F word. Yeah. Find a way to be funny without it. Maybe I have you... been funny. I cursed one time and you're giving me shit like it's a big deal. Don't say Jeff. that in front of my daughter. Don't say the S word or the F word. Jeez. <laughs> you know what? Forget it. Oh, forget it. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, forget oh, it. Oh, Jake! Jake. Jake. Oh, no. Don't go! Don't go! Jake. Oh, He's don't go, Judd! Is he actually going? He's not gonna go. Judd but Judd, Judd and Maude are seeing Spam a lot. There's swear words in Spam a lot, Judd. There's swear words in Spam a lot. Maybe you'll have to get your tampons for your budget. Swear well, a lot. Sorry, you're back. <laughs> he poked his head back in the room as I was saying that. <laughs> okay, fuck. I'm fucked. I'm kind of really fucked leave? right now. Just let it go, Jonah. Swear, swear, swear. Bye, Judd. Will Judd come back? Bye, Judd. Now get it out, Jonah. All right, he's gone. Fuck this noise. I'm so psyched right now. Cock balls. Vagina. Asshole. Ball sack. Bloody steamy asshole. Do you guys assholes. remember the, the, the night where the scene where you guys were escorting? Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Remember, remember the cum. Cum. <laughs> Dicks and cum. Big veiny dick and cum. Dick all that good. Anyway, getting back to it. So working this way, I think it's just going to save your ears in the long run. You know, because what happens if you mix the way most of us currently do? and you just loop a section and then it plays over and over, you keep tweaking things. It can be like half an hour, you're trying to work on like one little section. And then you do have to get up for something and then you come back and you just listen back and it's like, what the hell happened? It sounds nothing like how I remember, it just sounds terrible. You know, it's like if you've ever seen that scene from Father Ted when he's trying to hit that little dent out of the car. I mean, that's what's happening with your sound. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I'll just tap it the other way. It's no use, Ted. You'll never get it absolutely right. <laughs> so when you are using it in this way, especially to mix, it just gives your ears that little break, you know, and that's what they need. So for example, if we're going to finish the song, this we're at the outro. No, right, now to get back to the start, we have to rewind the whole thing. And it's during this time where you can just wait, you can make little notes about things. And you know, maybe the guitar was too loud that time, we'll turn the guitar up, so you jot that down. Uh, maybe the bass drum needed to come up more in the chorus, jot that down. And it just gives you time to think, you know? It gives you time to think about what the song needs, maybe what it doesn't need. And all whilst you're thinking, you can listen to silence, you know, if you're like me, you can listen to your computer make a whole bunch of noises, or people outside make a whole bunch of noises, which is really, really annoying. Um, but, you know, it's all useful. So now we're back at the start, and we hit play. And our ears are somewhat refreshed, and ready to take on the next pass of the mix. And I just, I just think that it's a useful way of doing things. You know, you can hear garbage trucks go past. It's... Yeah, that, that, that's what I like about it. Just the fact that it lets you, I guess in the moment, move at a slower pace, but overall, I think move at a faster pace. It saves your ears. You know, if you're like me, ears hurt all the time when you listen to things just because of some, you know, however long it's been that I've been listening to music and all that. Or garbage trucks go past. Is this really the time? It's like the one morning when I have time to make a video, every fucking thing has to go past at every single point in time. Like, ugh. I record in this room too, you know how hard that is? Anyway. 
So overall, there's only a few people I'm sure that really want to know how to do this, but there you go. That's just a few little tricks that I've learned to make Pro Tools somewhat more like a tape machine. There's a hell of a lot more like when it comes to gain staging and stuff like that, which I might go into in a future video because this one's already gone on for too long. I ramble too much. Um, but, you know, hopefully you picked something up. If you want to go back and check it all out, just watch the first few minutes of this video where it just outlines everything quickly. One thing I do want to bring up though is if you have some sort of MIDI controller using that really makes it a lot easier too. Like I've just got one of those little platform nano things. You can pretty much do everything with that. You know, you, you really don't need, um, you don't, you don't need anything else. So it's just a simple, easy way to change the workflow you have in Pro Tools. You might get something new out of it. You might hate it, but hey, if you do, then you can always go back and you need to spend a whole bunch of money on a tape machine. So, I mean, there are other options too. You can get some of those Tascam things. You know, I, I don't remember all the models of them, but you can get those and you can do it that way. But if you do screw up, you know, this is Pro Tools, you know, apart from the destructive record, which will just override everything. You know, you can always go back to the way you were doing it. You don't have to change much. It's just something to try. Uh, in saying that, I think that's really all I have to say. All right, actually, I just remembered I have one more thing to say. Um, if anyone knows, this would be actually very helpful to me because I don't know. I've like looked everywhere, all over the internet for this. I cannot find it for the life of me. But when I'm rewinding, I want to get the rewind head or the playback head, whatever you want to call it, to get to a certain spot and stop on its own right so if i'm to do it now i have to actually press stop say at one minute i don't want to press stop i just want it to stop at one minute like i want to get it to stop at one of these markers you know so it stops at the same place every time that would be so useful for me if anyone knows how to do that that would be greatly appreciated and i, I want to do it off of the fast forward and rewind so i want to press like fast forward and then stop at a certain time without me having to actually press stop you know that, that that would be very useful you know without having to type it in here and all that I just want to press fast forward and stop at a certain point if anyone knows how to do that please you know find a way to let me know because that would be that would be a big help all right bye